So, now that we've had this amazing overview about branding and building a website, I'm gonna talk about that nefarious little addictive demon that is Instagram. Let me get all set up. Does everyone have their smartphones here? Yeah. Can I get some glows? Put your smartphone up? Yeah, okay, perfect. So, look at this, okay. So as mentioned, my name is Zan, and for the last seven years, I've been marketing niche events and artists and small businesses to people all around the world. So from shoe stores, to getting 50,000 people to come out to a farmer's field in Oregon to witness a total solar eclipse, to finding a corporate audience for an orchestra made up entirely of Furbies, I've got a lot of experience in translating weird, unique ideas into like marketable, digestible content. So this year, I paired up with Evie on the right and we founded Rhythm Club. So Rhythm Club is a consulting agency to turn all of our blood, sweat, and literal tears of our 15 years experience in events and art marketing to something that can help you guys out and make it a little bit smoother. So first, I just wanna attack the issues. So can I get a show of hands of like who has an Instagram account right now? Everybody, amazing way to be on trend. So, the issues that I see come up most with businesses and artists when using social media, especially Instagram, is just kind of this sensitive, like, I don't know if I'm good enough, or I don't know what to post, or I don't want to sound obnoxious talking about my art. I don't know, like, if it's going to come across the way I want it to, and just this kind of, like, nervousness about what kind of content's going to work and kind of feeling overwhelmed or obnoxious. And then secondly, with clients, I tend to run into this like, especially with artists or people kind of with a conscientious nature, this like ethical issue around like, smartphones are taking over the world, everyone is disappearing into their tablets and their smartphones, and I don't want to be a part of the problem, and then we just get caught up in this cycle, and we never post content, and we watch everybody else blow up, and our dreams of becoming an influencer are dashed, and we don't get booked, and it's a cycle of depression, and all these things go on. So I just want to start out by saying that I get it. It's super tricky and Instagram is such a visual platform that it's really easy to feel insecure about the content that you're posting and how to take a selfie or even just putting your face on there at all. So you're not alone. It's like literally something I run into with all the artists that I book for large events and all the artists and small businesses I work with one-on-one. -on -one. So there's kind of this momism we use when we're working with artists is that it's not your job to think about how your content, like whether or not people are going to like it, it's good to think about whether or not it fits into a series of checks that I'll go into later in the presentation, but it's not your job to think about whether or not people are gonna hate it or hate you or judge you or think you're a hack. It is your job to use all of the tools available to grow your business and put your art out there. So just remember, as we go into this, that people expect what they see on Instagram to be really polished and really pretty and impressive. So they're going to kind of do that overlay for you subconsciously. So you don't have to worry about looking important because people will assume it anyway. So. Some of you might be like, I've got a Facebook page and I post on there, or I keep my website really well updated. Why do I need to spend a bunch of time on Instagram? And so I always recommend Instagram to small businesses or artists that are starting out because it's the most unlimited social platform there is that you can use without having to spend a bunch of money. So the statistics are pretty insane. There's a billion active users, so that's a seventh I'm sure maybe it's 8 billion people on the planet right now, but that's like an 8, let's say, of the population of the world that's gramming. There's 500 million daily active users. The like button gets hit an average of 4.2 billion times a day. 
Like that's staggering. And so just remember that it's like beyond possible for you to actually make an impact in that ocean of engagement, if you will. So Facebook, you kind of get held down by the man if you're not paying for your content. But with Instagram, with enough time and diligence, with a strategy of hashtags and targeting, you can actually make a difference. And especially in a small town, you can rise above kind of the income bracket that I know we've all felt of like, you look at Nelson and you're like, well, people don't want to pay $1,200 for my print or they don't want to pay $700 for my class, et cetera, et cetera. But with Instagram, you just get access to this. The world is at your fingertips. So it's a really important platform. And even if you feel awkward or like you don't know what to post or you don't want to post selfies, there's always a way to engage with it that makes sense for you and can feel comfortable. And as Black Sheep mentioned, you just want to make sure that you find that sweet spot where the content you're putting out feels natural and comfortable and you're not spending hours trying to like take a good selfie or annoying your friends by having them take all these super natural, natural shots of you drinking coffee to look like an intelligent writer. There's always a way that you can just do it in a comfortable and flowy fashion. So before we get started, it's just about consistency. So just making sure that you're building slowly. We're going to go over a lot of information. And to have a really bomb Instagram account, it does take a lot of time and a lot of diligence. But if you just like chip away at it slowly, you can have an account that looks really professional, is optimized for the algorithms that keep pushing um, accounts and content into more and more visibility, and have something that really reflects well on your brand and your business. OK, so can everybody open their phones to their Instagram accounts? I'll wait. I'll pull mine up, too. OK, so starting off with the bio. So. Since you all have Instagrams and are super on point, we all have bios. And you'll see if you look at the top, there's, if you go to edit profile, you'll see there's your username and then your name field. So I just want to break these down. So your username, you want to make sure it's something that's really searchable, easy for people who meet you at an event like this or heard about you through a friend to find. So it's better to go with, for example, my Instagram name is Zan Says So. So it has my own name in it for my personal brand and uh, something a little witty about how I'm always talking and giving my opinion. So you just want to make sure that your username is something that's related to your industry or what you do, searchable and like easy for somebody that's trying to remember you to find, or just the name of your brand itself. If you're not doing a personal brand, or your name isn't connected to your art and you're just doing something for your business. The second little like hack that a lot of people overlook is the name field. So I'm just gonna pop you to my Instagram here. So you see my username then says so, and then a lot of people will put their username again in their name field or just their name, or let's say I'm Zan Comerford and then my name field says Zan Comerford Artist. But the name field is actually searchable. Very few keywords are searchable in Instagram, but the name field comes up as a searchable option for people. So this is where you want to put keywords that describe you and what you do um, in, in a really succinct way. So mine says creative marketing consultant. And when you see my profile come up, when you're searching for Zan Say So, or you're searching for marketing, that pops up immediately. Whenever you share my profile with anyone, whenever you tag me, you see that instead of just seeing my own name. And so not only does that help optimize your profile for Instagram to milk and kind of push through to more visibility, it really helps people in like the quick action world that we live in to be able to get a glimpse of what you do immediately. And I don't think I need to really express the importance of that, of how catching people's attention and getting them to understand what you do in like a split second is the name of the game. Especially, can I just get an idea, like if 
the demographic or it was like visual artists, lots of visual artists, musicians, and then businesses like products. Okay, <laughs> good job. One product. Okay, so for visual artists, so I have a lot of experience on the booking side of things. And so when, which you know applies to all of you, if you're trying to get put in a gallery or get, uh, you know, recognized in any kind of larger umbrella. And the rapid fire that larger organizations are using to look at all of your social profiles is really something to consider. So when someone's looking at you to either buy your product or book you or recommend you to someone else, this having this dialed so that they see immediately what you do and get a taste of the flavor that you bring is really important. So to reflect back on that, just making sure that your your name field describes what you do and isn't just your name is gonna just like kick turbo boosters onto your, your bio and your life. So the next in the bio is you want to describe what you do creatively and again giving that taste of the magic that you're presenting. So a little like housekeeping note that you may have noticed already, you can't just hit enter on in your Instagram bio and have it go down a line. So if you just write a whole bunch of content, it's just going to smush up into a paragraph and not look very good. So you can either write it whoop, write it in your notes section and then copy and paste it into your bio and that can help with formatting or you can do as I've done here and use periods and adorable emojis to help express what you're talking about. So then you want to make sure there's a call to action for them to get to know you a little bit better or go look at your work. And so you want to constantly keep, not constantly, but you want to make sure that you're updating your bio regularly and especially updating that link. So you can see with me, we're just in the process of launching Rhythm Club. We have a tour coming up. And so I just like to reference that, that there's an opportunity to train with me and then put the, the link to my site. As an artist, you could be like, see me, like my most recent gallery work here, or book me to live paint at your event here, or like see what I think about the new acrylics by X company here. So, you can think of that bottom call to action that links to your site as kind of the place where you interject movement into your bio. So the bio is you know, static, you wanna change it and refresh it as you feel and as you grow, but then this bottom section here is where you're giving a reason for people to keep coming back to your site or to your Instagram because they're going to start getting adjusted to the fact that you change that all the time. And it's just a really good look. If you have press, you want to update the link. And then it also helps you see on your site how many people are referring to you from Instagram. And you can reference that link uh, in your content. The business profile. Hands up if you have a business profile. OK. So the business profile is the jam. You don't even have to have a business to do it. It's like this amazing hack that Instagram's provided for us. So. We can walk through it real quick. If you go to edit profile, you'll see a switch to business profile come up. And you want to, so you'll click switch to a business profile. It might ask you to set up a Facebook page because it connects through Facebook to give you these insights. And so once you have a business profile, you can promote your content on Instagram. So that allows it to be clickable to send to a link. You've probably all noticed as heavy, amazing Instagram users, that you can't click an Instagram post. There's nothing clickable, and then you can't click a link. You can't click um, the photo unless you're going to other people's tagged accounts. So it allows you to make your posts clickable to the URL of your choice, and it gives you insights on who your demographics are, who's looking at your site, Beyond the likes that you're getting, it shows you how many people have visited your profile, whether or not your content made it into the Instagram discovery page. It shows you, you know, the age and gender of your followers, where they are in the world. It's just this amazing resource that helps you start treating your Instagram like a brand. So whether that's your personal brand or it's a brand for your products, it's just essential. I highly recommend getting an Instagram business profile. 
that's another note I just want to tag on there is treating your Instagram like a storyboard. So just kind of taking that step like away from your Instagram can really help with the emotional sensitive artist roadblocks that we can come up with. So it can be really hard to know what to post when it feels really connected to us. And you're all creatives and you're all in creative fields, so I'm guessing everything you do feels super connected to us. And this is the reason why my own Instagram is like, you know, less, it, I post less often on it than I do for other brands because it's connected to me. So it's just really helpful to kind of take a step back and remember that it's a storyboard. Yes, you need to be vulnerable. Yes, you need to be authentic, but not to your own, like, you can still just step back and let it be a polished, you know, forward-facing version of you. And doing setting up a business profile can help with that. So your bio checklist is just, is my username something that relates to my business, my name, and is easy to search? Is my name field something that describes explicitly what I do and what I offer people? Is my bio beautiful, easy to read, and clear, witty and engaging? And do I have a link that's related to my business? It can even be your Facebook if you don't have a business page yet. Just give them a chance, give people who are visiting your page a chance to go off of Instagram and learn more about you. I have a question. Yeah. Regarding the business part. Yeah. I have a, a regular Facebook account and then an art related one. Yeah. And when I switched to business, I tried to, you know, I used to share on my regular Facebook before. Yeah. And now it won't let me. But it won't, I can't go to my business one. So does it want to, does it want to share to your business page instead? Does, do you still have the option when you're creating a post? Do you still have the slider bar that says Facebook and then like a name? This is Facebook and then it says to which page and I, I can't go to my private page because that's, I don't want to my private page. I want it to the business page and it, it only gives me the private page as an option. Okay, so there's a Facebook business manager and you can just Google Facebook business manager and you can set that up and that allows you, okay. excuse me, to connect your which Facebook page you want to be connected to um, which Instagram page you want. Okay, so I have to do it through Facebook. Yeah, okay. yeah, Facebook owns Instagram. Thank you. And so if there's any glitches going on, Facebook Business Manager will let you set up if you have multiple accounts or things like that. Um, it'll help you smooth out those creases. Did anybody make any edits to their bio? You get 10 points. Yes! 10 points for you. Yeah, touche. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda go over basics here and get into some more advanced optimization stuff as well, but um, I know there's a really varied experience level. So we're gonna talk about stories. How many people use stories on a regular basis? Yeah, okay. So stories came out two years ago and they're kind of like Instagrams <laughs> I say they're kind of like Instagram's version of Snapchat, but they pretty much destroyed Snapchat once they came out. So Instagram stories are these um, like long, vertical, up to 15 second slides that make this um, multicolored circle show up around your profile, and then that shows up at the top there. And so Instagram stories are have gone from being like a cute adjunct that you can do if you feel like it, to being really essential now if you want your account to grow and you want to build your brand. The slides are up to 15 seconds each. And then when you complete a slide, you'll see these little bars at the top. I don't know if you can see them, like right there. And so those either autoplay into the next slide or you can click through and journey through the slides. And so again, it's just this like exciting page turner feeling of like, what's gonna be next? That just pulls people into your content and then stopping through your story also becomes a part of their daily habit. They wanna see what you're up to and then you add another story later on in the day and now they see there's another bar there and they wanna check in again. And once you get into people's social media habits, you're just pretty much good to go. So I always recommend posting a story morning, noon, and night 
as kind of a general rule, posting throughout the day and always having at least, at least three slides up there by the end of your posting day. They're live for 24 hours, so you get a little bit of leeway there. And then you can also save them to your phone and use them later. Is that a show of hands who's familiar with the highlights in Instagram story? One, yes, tech savvy, okay. So the highlights, when you post an Instagram story, I wish I had an example. Okay, well, I'll use mine as an example. So once you post your Instagram story, it'll give you an option to highlight it. There's a little heart in the bottom right-hand corner that you can highlight it. And so now that we've separated our personal sensitive artist soul from our Instagram, and it's just this like money-making powerhouse account, we are using this to you know, inform people about what we do as much as possible. So when you highlight a story, it stays on your, on your Instagram page and you get to name it. So then down here, if I had been so wise as to include that, you would have however many highlight stories you would have, so let's say five, at the bottom, and they would be titled whatever you wanted to, which turns your Instagram into like a landing page for your business. So if I was an artist, my highlights would be like live painting, recent work, press, bio, or something like that. So then you just, your Instagram profile becomes a super rich wealth of information about your business and your art and your craft without even having people having to leave your website. And again, they're all just like begging to be clicked on because of that amazingly well-designed colorful circle. So to just kind of go over it again, use Instagram stories, they're essential, don't be lazy. Show behind the scenes content or use branded slides and remember to highlight to save to your profile the most important parts that you want people to know about your business. So the highlights are saved stories? Yeah, the highlights are saved stories that you can title. Yeah? Is it ever okay to mix up, like having some behind the scenes and having a little bit of branded content? Totally. So I wouldn't necessarily do those in the same story. Um, if, so the question was, is it okay to mix up design slides and behind the scenes kind of casual content? And I would not do them, as kind of a general rule, I wouldn't put them in the same story. So I would either be like, if it was, let's say I was making a bracelet, or I wanted to showcase this particular bracelet, I would have a slide of the bracelet, a slide of someone wearing it, a slide of the price and a design story. Or I would have a slide of me making the bracelet, a video, and then like a finished product photo that I take with my phone, and then like maybe a boomerang, which is the like backwards forwards uh, little video that Instagram has made of someone drinking a coffee wearing the bracelet. And so those are kind of the two different ways that I would place that product, one being in a design slide and one being like a behind the scenes. Because if you're doing design slides, you're picking background colors, you're picking fonts, you're creating a story that's cohesive, and you can, of course, include photos of you know, your process or behind the scenes, but you just don't want to overlay them. Consistency and aesthetics is what Instagram is all about. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Does so anybody have any questions or need to like breathe or laugh or cry or take a selfie? <laughs> I have one about the stories. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. No, that's an endless debate. Yeah. It freezes and it just keeps saying load and I have to like completely log out of my account, oh. set everything, re update it. And so I find it either has to be like a really boring picture with nothing, no lighting. Yeah. Um, and that seems to be the only way it'll work without like freezing up. When you try and put a GIF in from Instagram, like use one of theirs to put like a little dancing man yeah. on it or something. Have you tried on data and Wi Fi? That's the, yeah, that's the first thing I would do is just check your connection okay. um, and then try from a different device. Like if somebody has an iPad or something, because it sounds like it's a device or a connection error. Or try um, deleting Instagram and reinstalling it. Yeah, that's what I have to do. That's what you have to do. Interesting. Yeah, it sounds like a device glitch. Okay. Um, so I would either maybe leave GIFs alone or um, 
Yeah, it sounds like a device glitch. Okay. Um, but there's so much else you can do too with like text and filters and stuff to make it beautiful. Okay. Thank you for your question. I saw another hand. No? Sneaky. I got one. What, what, what's the longest boomerang these days? Like how many seconds? Boomerangs I think are the same. Let me think. I think that, yeah, I think they're 15 seconds as well. Total. So, but it shortens, right? So if I film you getting up from your chair for 15 seconds, it's going to like compress that into you like getting up and sitting down, getting up and sitting down. And then you can, when you post it or send it, you can choose whether you allow autoplay, like whether people can click it again and watch it again and again. But that brings me to a good point <coughs> about Instagram TV. New update, anybody? Instagram TV. So. Instagram TV is like YouTube embedded in Instagram. So I'll just go over it super briefly. Instagram TV allows you to put long form video on and it auto plays when people click on it. So um, when you open up your Instagram TV, it starts playing automatically. You can title uh, your content. It's not something I'd recommend doing if you're just kind of breaking into doing video content at all. Um, I would perfect your content strategy and your video content in stories and on your feed first. But it's just cool to check out. It's probably going to do really well as Instagram monopolizes everything. So getting into content. This is the big one. So when you're thinking about what to say, it's easy to be like, I'm an artist, so I post content about art. And some people do that, and it works out super, super well. They never post any content about anything else, and it's just like a landing page for their art. So we're going to leave those as the juggernauts, and you know that can work for some people, and I hope it works for you. But if it doesn't work for you, or you find yourself limited with content, like that's a lot of content to produce, then you want to pick three themes that you can weave around and that people can come to rely on your account for. So, for example, your art or your business or your music or like the mainstay of what you're trying to get across and you're trying to sell. And then two other, one or two other related themes. So that might be activism or it might be the outdoors or it might be coffee or it might be babies or kittens or, you know, something that helps support the concept that you're putting out there, which is you as a super successful whatever it is that you do, and provides people a reason to keep coming back to your account, or at least like enjoy what they see while they're there. So identifying those themes really clearly takes a lot of the stress out of what you're going to create and how you're going to have this bomb feed. So once you've got the three themes, one to, th <coughs> one to three themes picked out, you want to plan your content in advance. And I'll give a couple resources later on um, that are online softwares that you can use to make this a lot easier. But you want to think about at least you know five posts in advance so you can start to weave a story. So let's say that I'm an artist and for a week of content, I'm going to post a picture of a finished product of my art. The second post is going to be, let's use this example, so I have art, activism, and hiking. So I'm going to post a picture of my art that's finished and high res and super beautiful. Then I'm going to post a picture, no, let's say like a little boomerang of me walking to my studio and it's a beautiful fall day. And I'm noticing that the colors of that post weave into the colors of the previous. So this isn't essential, but again, cohesiveness and aesthetics is what separates a beautiful account that people want to look at and come back to and is recognized as professional from people that might be booking you or paying for your product from just like a casual personal account. So I've got a poke picture of uh, my art. I've got a picture of me walking to the studio. I've got a super inspirational quote about the political cause of your choice. I've got an in the studio like hilarious oops, I spilled paint photo. And then I've got a nature photo about getting out of the studio and taking time for yourself and being on a mountaintop. So I've woven in these themes. I'm giving the viewer a sense of the product that I produce, but also the kind of person that I am. 
and I've woven the colors into each other so that the theme of the feed looks cohesive. I'm just going to pull out my notes for one hot little minute here because I've got some juicy hacks on content. Okay, do you guys have your notes out? Notes? Okay. So, it's been proven, this is like taking it to the next level a little bit, that a single dominant color has the best results. So not doing super rich multicolored photos, but just going with like, this is a beige temperate photo, this is like blue, this is, you know, grayscale, not super rich and super saturated. Texture gets 79% more engagement than non-textured photos. More background space, so having <clears throat> having the feature that you're talking about kind of in the foreground and having more background space gets 65% more engagement than if it was just like smashed up against and the frame was really full of stuff. Blue, interestingly enough, gets 70% more engagement than red. So just as an interesting note. And uh, you just want to make sure that you're using the same filter for every post. So Instagram gives you a variety of filters and you want to keep that cohesive and use Valencia for everything or use a rich saturation one for everything, but just stick the same. So as Black Sheep was mentioning, it makes so much, makes your job easier to spend a little bit of time figuring out what you're going to do and the direction you're going to start out in. And that'll obviously change, but at least have like a, an overarching leap into your Instagram. Okay, so now you've come up with your kind of content strategy. You're using stories, your account is super beautiful, anyone that goes there gets a sense of what you do and how amazing you are at it, but still you're only getting like 17 likes on each photo and still you're cruising at like 350 followers and you know every one of them and they're all your friends. So how do we grow an Instagram account? I've had really interesting experiences growing like double brands for businesses where we have to get, you know, that huge credibility the followers give you. And from the perspective of a booker or a purchaser, unfortunately, and this is just something that we need to accept, the amount of followers your Instagram has and the amount of engagement you get is, is like, is, it's a massive credit to your work. And I wrestled with this for so long, just wishing that it would be different and hating that social media was dictating us this much, but it also shows your like tenacity as a professional, it shows your ability to work within the technological landscape that we're in, and it shows social proof. It's like, I want to purchase art, or I want to book artists, or I want to, um, you know, follow a life coach, for example, that other people also trust, and it's like the Amazon review section. So, you gotta get out there and grow your account. And so this is the biggest mistake I see people making when they're kind of going gung-ho at their Instagram. Okay, they're going gung-ho at their Instagram and uh, wanting to make it super flossy is that they don't engage with anybody else. They just post their content and leave it there. So you wanna make sure that you're getting out there into people's, um, other people's feeds, liking and commenting and being genuine. A little hack there is, so when you post something on your page, and you use your hashtag, click the hashtag that, let's say I love my art, or like Acrylic Painters Anonymous, and then Instagram, when you click the hashtag, Instagram will give you an option to see either the top or the most recent content, and when you do that, you wanna click on recent content and engage with those posts first, because those people are likely still on their phones, and then they'll see that you commented, go back to your profile, and follow you forever. Just be really genuine, Make sure your comments aren't just like, nice photo, bro. There's lots of bots you can use that will automate that for you. Some of them are good, and if you want to book a private session with me, I can talk to you about which ones to use and not use. You want to be careful with automation because um, it can you know, post like amazing on like a photo of someone grieving their uncle's death, or you know, it can get a little bit awkward. And then maximize. You just want to make sure that you're tagging 
someone in almost every photo, using hashtags, using a location, and keeping your Instagram stories going. And those are all practices that Instagram sees as you know, proper use of the platform and pushes your visibility forward. So, hashtags, I'll go super quickly here. Um, longer hashtags rather than shorter. So, as far as the hashtag itself, something like, I love my dog, will do better than dogs because you'll get lost in the fray. If you want to really go into it, you're looking for hashtags that have above 1,000 and under 10,000 posts for them. So there's some resources I'll show you later that can help you figure out what those are, but that's going to help you with visibility. Don't use too many. About 11 on each post is kind of ideal. Best times to post are early morning, evening, and late night. Think of kind of the working hours as the dead zone between 11 and noon, excuse me, 9 and noon, no go. Like one to three is terrible, but any of those do really well. And then automate as much as you can. Does it matter, like, the time zones? And, you know. I mean, unless you're specifically targeting the East Coast, just post in your own time zone. And so be, give yourself a generous window, like, so six o'clock Pacific is nine o'clock Eastern, so post at six and you're kind of covering your bases. Um, but I would just like take the pressure off yourself and try and post to the earliest that you can within those windows, but don't, unless you're specifically targeting the East Coast or Asia, um, I would just, to begin with, post within your own time zone. Good question. So, we're almost done. Canva, these are some resources. Canva helps you design super easy drag and drop, beautiful Instagram um, posts and quotes and has all these beautiful templates you can use. Easel is amazing. I just discovered it for uh, designing Instagram story slides, and it has all these beautiful, like, really professional-looking templates that you can use for free. Planoly is my favorite for planning out the visual look of your Instagram feed. Um, so it allows you to move your posts around and see what they look like next to each other. Pexel is a really great place for stock photography and stock video. So if you're like, I don't know if I can post another video of my cat, you can just uh, pull these really beautiful free stock videos and use them in your stories because video just does so much better. Not to be overlooked. Later is a godsend. Later allows you to auto-publish to Instagram now. So you can schedule your week of content with amazing captions and everything's optimized. And think about it and write on your desktop and it will publish automatically as long as you have a business account. So these are my go-to. Um, top resources for making Instagram life a little bit easier. If you want to learn more about how you can really catalyze growth, the hacks that I didn't share with you today, how you can make a marketing plan for your Instagram that will actually turn into money, clarify what's holding you back and like why you're not getting where you need to be on social or with your creative business, if you want to help generating your hashtag and targeting strategy, or if you want to make sure that your, angle is, your account is really angled to the market that you want to be growing in and working towards, if you want to DM me, I'll give you a form, and you can book with Rhythm Club with either Evie or myself, and get all of this for just 85 down from 110, which is our usual consulting price. So, that was a lot, and that's just really the beginning of how you can start to optimize your Instagram. So I hope you guys all get super social and inspired and find a way to be comfortable with it and just have tremendous success in all the likes on all your Instagram posts. Thanks.